8th Local 5 is your local election headquarters covering every angle of this very important midterm election. We have reporters covering the statewide and federal races that impact you. Our team is covering the third and first congressional races as well as the race everyone in Iowa has on the ballot. That's the governor's race. And we're also looking into federal election monitors who are in Buna Vista County right now. First, let's start with the governor's race. It's one of the most watched races across the state of Iowa. Local 5's Rafael Lopez is live at Governor Reynolds' election night party. Rafael? Well, Jack and Stephanie, tonight is the night. It is now up to the Iowan people to decide who the next governor is. And I'm here at the Hilton Hotel, the headquarters for Governor Reynolds. And I'm joined here by someone who's been with her right from the beginning, Senator Ernst. And Senator, you've been campaigning with the governor right from the beginning. Why is she the perfect person to be the governor of Iowa? She is a leader. She is a true leader. She's compassionate. She loves this state of Iowa. I haven't seen this type of enthusiasm for a leader for a very long time. And, and truly, the work that she has done and the uh, great accomplishments we have seen in the state of Iowa speak very well to her leadership and her leadership team. Well, the polls are still open, Senator, and there are some people who might still be undecided right now. What are you telling, or what would you say, rather, to the person right now who still doesn't know who to vote for? I would say under Kim Reynolds' leadership, Iowa has been ranked as number one in the nation. We have the second lowest unemployment rate. We have three straight quarters of wage increases here in the state of Iowa. We have a career-ready programs in our schools. We have increased spending for K through 12. And education. Um, so tremendous accomplishments. It's the third best managed state in the nation. And why on earth would we want to change in the middle of such great accomplishments with her tremendous leadership? It, it talk to us about you're the first female in Iowa elected to the U.S. Senate representing Iowa. Governor Reynolds, obviously also a female. What do you think this means for Iowa to have powerful women in, in power? I think it sets a great example for many eras of young women as they grow and develop and decide that they want to take on challenges. I heard from a young lady the other night uh, when she was given the opportunity to choose her Halloween costume. She chose to be an astronaut, not a princess or a bride. She chose to be an astronaut. And I think having strong women leaders out there leading the way in different types of fields. We are setting a great example for future generations of women leaders. Senator, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Uh, we'll be with you uh, again later on tonight. Uh, we are here once again at the Hilton Hotel. We are expecting 700 people, according to organizers, and doors will open to the public at 7 p.m. We'll be here all throughout the night to bring you the latest. But for now, we're live in Des Moines. Rafael Lopez, Local 5 News. We are Iowa. Rafael, thank you. Fred Hubble is a first-time candidate and Kim Reynolds' Democratic opponent in the governor's race. In the latest polls, Hubble has a slight edge on Reynolds. Local 5's Angelina Salcedo is live at Fred Hubble's election night party with the Democratic Party chair, Troy Price. Angelina. Okay. Well, Jack and Stephanie, a very quiet night as this room is getting ready for the election results to come back in. And right now I'm joined with the Iowa chair for the Democratic Party, Troy Price. And Troy, why is this night so important for you guys? And why is it important for Democrats to get out there and vote? Well, you know, we have seen what the Republican agenda is here in this state. It's been attacks on our workers and underfunding of our schools and taking away health care rights for uh, people all across the state. And so the Democratic Party is hard at work right now trying to elect candidates who are going to go out there and fight for every single person in this state. And so uh, for those who haven't voted yet, we're asking you to go out there, find your polling place. You still have uh, four hours left. Go out there and make sure your voice is heard tonight. When it comes to Democratic candidate for Governor Fred Hubble, why would you say it's important for Iowans to go out there and vote for him? Well, Fred represents a new direction in this state, a new change in, uh, change in this state. You know, we have seen uh, the mismanagement of the Reynolds administration and the mismanagement of the budget and this doubling down on the privatized Medicaid.
Medicaid, uh, this disastrous program that has impacted the health care of hundreds of thousands of Iowans, the underfunding of our schools, the taking away of rights for our workers, the, uh, uh, the uh, changes to IPERS that are being talked about. We know uh, people can see what's at stake. Fred Hubble represents a very clear break from that. He wants to make sure that our schools have the funding so our kids can go out there and have the best education that they possibly can that I got when I was a, uh, uh, in school here in Iowa, uh, that uh, folks can go out there and have health care, the health care that they deserve, uh, uh, and end this privatized Medicaid disaster so that people are able to get health care. Um, Reprioritize uh, our budget to make sure that people are getting, uh, so that we're not sending our tax dollars to out-of-state corporations, but instead uh, reinvesting them in our schools and our communities and creating jobs and not just uh, uh, big cities here in Des Moines, or here across the state, not just giving $20 million to Apple, but we're spreading that out and making sure that communities uh, all across the state can share in that wealth. That is what Fred Hubble is, uh, represents. That's what Fred Hubble is fighting for, and that's exactly what he's going to do when he gets elected and Democrats get elected tonight and uh, take office uh, early next year. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining us, but there you guys heard it right there. This is what the Democratic Party is pushing for, and they're hoping that Fred Hubble will be elected governor tonight. But for now, I'll send it back to you guys in studio. Reporting live in Des Moines, Angelina Salcedo, Local 5 News. We are Iowa. All right, Angelina, thank you. Another big storyline that we are following tonight is the balance of power in Congress. Yeah, right now, Republicans lead with 238 seats in the U.S. House. Right now, Democrats have 192. Democrats would need 218 seats to win a majority there, and many think that they can get to that point. Two races in Iowa are being closely watched by both parties that could possibly tip the balance in favor of Republicans or Democrats. One of those high-profile Iowa congressional races is in the 3rd District, and that covers central Iowa and parts of western Iowa. Congressman David Young is defending his seat for a third time now. This campaign is against Democrat Cindy Axney. And Local 5's John Schaefer is live at Congressman Young's election night party in Des Moines. John. Yes, Jack, that's right. Congressman David Young looking for a win here in his third term, it would be. But it's a tough matchup here against Cindy Axney. This is a purple seat, so one that's kind of volatile going both ways, whether it be Democrat or Republican, but a key for these Republicans moving forward. D David Young has had big, big hitters in the political game campaigning for him over the last couple of weeks. That includes President Donald Trump saying, quote, if a, a vote for David Young is a vote for me. And we'll talk to him a little bit later at, at 6 about that as well. But a big thing for David Young is he's looking for that rural vote to really come out and get him over the hump. But Jack will have more, plenty more here from David Young in a bit. Reporting from downtown Des Moines, John Schaefer, let's send it back to you with our local election headquarters. All right, John, thank you. Democrat Cindy Axney is slightly favored to win this third congressional district race, but it is still labeled as a toss-up to most political experts. Yeah, pretty close. So how is the first-time candidate handling the pressure with just hours away now from finding out the results? Local 5's Bryn Carmen is live at Cindy Axney's election night party. Bryn? Jack, Stephanie, a very calm room that's going to just completely change here in a couple hours. I just talked to Cindy, and she's feeling good going into tonight. Axney and her husband cast their ballots this morning at their precinct in West Des Moines. Cindy Axney has spent the past few days rallying other Democrats and knocking on doors to get people out to the polls and voting for her. A lot of money has been spent in this third congressional district. A significant portion of that money has come from outside groups on both sides of the ticket. You've probably seen dozens of ads for and against Axney and Young. More than a million dollars has been spent on this third congressional district race. A lot of it coming from congressional PACs for the Democrats and the Republicans. Obviously, a lot at stake tonight. We've been saying it over and over, but you know, the House is up for grabs and Cindy is hoping to unseat um, incumbent David Young. We're actually going to go interview her right now. So if you tune into Facebook, just search We Are Iowa on Facebook. We're going to do a live interview with her right now and then we'll keep you updated as the evening progresses along. For now, reporting live in Des Moines, Bryn Carmen, Local 5 News. We are Iowa. All right, Bryn, thank you. And the first congressional district of Iowa is in play to possibly tip the scales either way for Republicans or Democrats tonight. That's Republican Congressman Rod Blum's seat. He is fighting for his third term against Democratic State Representative Abby Finkenauer. In recent polling, Finkenauer is ahead. Local 5's Jacob Peklo is live in Dubuque at her election night watch party. Jacob. 
And Jacob, how is voter turnout in the eastern part of the state for this race Good tonight? Good evening, everybody. Welcome out to Dubuque, Iowa. We've made our way out to the northeastern portion of the state. We are at Seven Hills Brewing Company. It's going to be a, the place of Abby Finkenauer's victory party. That's the way it's scheduled to be, at least tonight. We've got Rod Blum, who's over in Piasta tonight as well. We're we'll following that race. The interesting thing about both of these people is they've been in their current jobs since 2014. Blum has been a U.S. congressman since being elected. This is his third time running. Well, Finkenauer was in the Iowa House since 2014. She was elected at just 25 years old. She's trying to unseat Blum. Now, we've heard there's a lot of steady voting going on here in Dubuque County so far. 65,000 people are registered to vote. Now, just through Saturday alone, 21,000 people had already cast their ballots for this uh, election. Even more people went in and did their early voting yesterday as well. So we've seen a steady stream coming through today. The lines have been very consistent. The poll workers told us they didn't even get a, really a lunch break today. It's going to be a very interesting race to watch this evening, and we'll certainly bring you the update updates and the progress as the night goes on. But for now, reporting live in Dubuque, Jacob Peklo, Local 5 News, we are Iowa.